Hello everyone, Michelle here from The Creative Cove. Thanks for joining me today. Um, well, today I hope you like bugs. Because if you don't, you're not, not going to like today's little tutorial or video. Um, I've been, uh, I love bugs. I've been fascinated by bugs since I was a little kid. Um, I thought today we could do a slow, kind of more deliberate type watercolor painting uh, using some insects as inspiration. Uh, I have been playing away and really enjoying this little gold paint and kind of it's still a pretty loose approach to watercolor but this time we're kind of staying in the lines so to speak. So we're going to do a little sketching and a little painting. So I've done a couple of different beetles which I really I love beetles. I just find them so neat and um, interesting. So here's a couple of different ones. And again, with the gold, I'm hoping the gold is reflecting so you can see it. Really fun. I did a moth, and I kind of, I'm just going to keep this here, um, kind of made them the colors up. So these beetles are not accurate color depictions of this type of beetle, of these types of beetles. I'm just having fun with color. I'm not uh, trying to capture the exact beetle itself in its color, or just its form, and then I get to play with color. So here's a little dragonfly. Really like the simplicity of this one. Really cute. This was my first one, so he's a bit muddy, but he's still kind of cute. So I thought we would uh, do one today. So let's see um, what we want to draw. Um, I'm using these little, they're postcards actually from a little pad. Where's the pad? I picked this up at uh, a local art supply store and there are Stethmore watercolor postcards. They are acid free. Uh, what else? Doesn't really give me. Oh, here, 140 pounds. And I don't know if it's cold press or it feels cold press because it's very smooth, but. I don't see it on here. Anyways, that's what I'm using today, but you can use anything you've got. You do want to use a relatively decent quality watercolor paper, nothing too cheap, just because we're going to be abusing the paper quite a bit. And um, you want to be able to lift and remove the watercolor because bear in mind, I'm not a watercolor artist. I just like to doodle and dabble in it. I'm not... Um, I'm not here to really give you a lesson in watercolor, more of a, hey, paint along with me and let's explore watercolor type of deal. <laughs> Just so bear that in mind when it comes to uh, what we're doing today. So let's do a sketch. So I'm going to do one of these kind of flying, I think they're from Indonesia, they're kind of like a giant flying um, grasshopper. So you want to bear in mind if you're working on what size you're working with and the composition that you're working with that the wings and the legs can fit. Um, so I'm going to start with this head here. So I just drew a thin line here and you might not be able to see it that well because I want to keep it light. Just kind of give me an idea of the rough estimate of the, the middle of the paper. And then I'm going to start with his little head here. So I kind of do a little frowny face and then I'm going to give him a little bottom of his neck which is kind of a line across and then I'm going to give him an eyeball they got these big eyeballs kind of like dragonflies and then they got these really huge antennas which are really fun so I'm just gonna bring those way out here and I want to keep them light they're drawing light so he's kind of got a segmented back here so when I draw insects, I think of them in terms of little shapes as opposed to ginormous big insects that I have to kind of capture really carefully. I just break it down into a shape. So for example, the beetle here, I'll draw this shape, then I'll draw this shape, then I'll draw this shape, as opposed to trying to outline the whole thing. So that might help you uh, break it down a little bit. This video is going to be a little slower than my usual videos. I'm going to try and take my time. I find I rush a little bit when I'm painting. Um, this time I'm going to just take my time. So I have no idea how long this video is going to be, but you can always fast forward the parts you're not interested. But I do hope you paint along with me. 
So I'm just going to sketch out these lines. He's almost got a dragonfly type top wing that comes out. And then he's got these huge wings underneath that are very light and transparent. Almost like a butterfly wing down here. And then this side. So the, I find the trickiest part about these drawings is actually making it uniform on both sides. You want to make sure he's even on both sides. There's my eraser. So I just sketch it out until I get what I'm looking for. And I will be kind of having to turn this a little bit. Pull this one down. And then shorten this one a little. Until I get a, a look I'm happy with. And you can, you know, you can use your pencil, for example, use a pencil and say, okay, his wing's this long on this side and a little bit longer on this side. So there are techniques where you can actually use to measure out whether or not you've, you've got them close. Uh, I'm just eyeballing it. So I'm going to give him a little bit of a fatter bum here. It's a little bit rounder at the bottom. And he's got this piece that comes out. And then he's got these huge little grasshopper legs that come out from under the wing here. And then down. These big drapey long legs. So he's got a bit of a knee. And then it shifts directions. He also has a pair up here come out from under his wing, kind of hang on a little bit, and then go back in. Kind of very dainty looking insect, but big. They get massive. They get really big. And then he's got another one that kind of comes out from under here. And because he has got transparent wings, I'm going to draw them in so that we can kind of pull them out a little later. We choose to. So there's insect number one. So I'm going to do two today because I do like to have a little bit of drying time in between my um, paintings. So I thought we'd do a stag beetle on this one. They're really pretty kind of huge beetles. Um, again, you want to make sure that the proportion is relatively in the middle. That wasn't even in the middle. <laughs> So you want to make sure that you kind of give yourself an indication of where the middle is. And this kind of also helps me gauge how much space I need for the actual beetle itself. So let's start with um, the longest part will be his arms here. So we'll put his stag in the front here. And they kind of have these funky looking I think he's more of an atlas beetle than a stag beetle, but I think they're in the same family. They have these giant, what look like horns, coming off the top of their head. Because I think the stag beetles actually are more, look like actual antlers. When this guy doesn't have the antler bit. So normally they are, they have their big, bodies here but what I'm going to do is I'm going to open his wings so his shell is open I do it on this side and again the trickiest part is making it symmetrical we'll do our best again this is just fun and loose if you remember to breathe and just enjoy the creative process that's what it's all about. I don't go in thinking, oh, this is something I'm going to frame on my wall. It might end up that way. But if it doesn't, it's okay as well. So this is kind of their body underneath. Their soft part, soft frame. That's protected by this hard shell. Kind of have these 
lines across and just putting some indication in so that I remember to put that texture in with my watercolor. I'm going to remove that line there. So just a nice sketch. And then he's got his wings that come out, fold out like this kind of thing with some veining. I'll go this side. I think I might drop his wing a little smaller. I feel like that's maybe a little too big for him for the size of his body. Let's shorten it a bit. This guy coming out here. I like the, the fat end of that one, so I'm gonna fatten up this side. Just kind of flip my head over it. Sorry, just want to make sure that I'm pretty symmetrical there. Okay, and then we'll put the kind of indication of. Um, wings in here and I do them at the same time because again the pattern I want to keep symmetrical we'll simplify that and then we will just kind of give him a little indication of a head and then we'll put in a body so I feel like his neck is really long let's make his head a little fatter he needs such a long neck. These are nice big beetles there. They got some meat to them, some weight to them. You do want to try and keep your lines clean, oops, cleaner, um, just so they don't show up so much in the, um, the watercolor itself. If you don't like that look, the lines don't bother me in a watercolor painting. I find it just adds to the textures and interest of the painting. But I do want to keep it kind of neat. So now he's got these really fun legs with all these spiky bits that are made to cling on to things. The legs are so much fun. Now I not doing an exact sketch of this beetle. I'm just putting in what I think it looks like in a way. So I have um, a beetle in my head and just drawing him out. So he could be very wrong. <laughs> so if you have a an image in front of you of this actual beetle, go ahead and use that. This I'm just kind of putting out from my head from seeing a few of them in my day. And then he'll, of course, have an, a third leg under here, but we're not going to see that. So there we go. There's our two little sketches of two different insects, and I don't have their exact names. I'm sorry. Um, something I would add in writing later. I'm going to use my uh, Mei Liang watercolors here. I'm just going to clean it. Probably should have done that before I started. And we're just going to experiment with some colors. So I've been really having a lot of fun just kind of playing with a color palette and letting it see where it takes me. Because again, I'm not a watercolor artist. Um, I just like to play. So I don't know how the colors are going to mix exactly. I have done a little experimentation. Look at this really pretty I went to a craft show the other day. I can't tip it because the water will come out, but oh, uh, something with my phone. I don't know what that is. Anyways, um, uh, I bought this off a lady who made them, and they're so pretty, and it actually holds paintbrushes. Look. How cool is that? Anywho, I thought that was really pretty. So that's what you're going to hear me dinging my paintbrush on. So for this guy, let's try some... I'm going to try and remember to bring my color palette out here so you can see what I'm playing with. So this is going to be yellow ochre. And what I love about pa painting these is um, 
just how experimental it is. It, not just by color, but the amount of water that you choose to use. I just find it so much fun to just play with it. So I'm doing a thin coat here of yellow ochre with a pretty wet brush. So this is a rough brush. This is a number 10 watercolor brush. And I would recommend a decent watercolor brush for these details. Again, just so you can, it helps you control the paint a little bit. Um, and it also helps that technique of removing paint, that lifting technique, which comes in handy, especially if you're like me and you overdo it and you want to take some paint off. And you get a very nice, beautiful, fine point with a good watercolor brush. So let's drop some other color in here. I'm going to go for this. Which one's this? Light sky blue. And I'm going to see what colors I can get. So it's turning it a tiny bit green. And watercolors I find mix very differently than, say, acrylics. Um, because I guess they have a transparent nature, so they don't really mix exactly the same way. They, they generate new colors as opposed to go kind of muddy or brown. So let's put some up here. Again, not really, well, no, not even close to painting what this bug actually looks like. <laughs> like he's not this color. He's kind of just a plain old boring sand color. But we're going to have some fun. So this orange is it's cadmium red actually. So I'm gonna, I'm going to drop some of this in here and see what happens. Just have some fun with it. So you pick the colors that appeal to you when you're painting your little guy. Okay, so I'm gonna let him dry a wee bit and move to this guy, and that's why I did two. Let's do some, I'm really drawn to purples on these bugs. So this is a fresh uh, deep violet. No, that can't be right. Fresh, fresh purple? Fresh purple, I believe. And this is, I'm working wet on dry right now. My paper is dry. But my brush is very wet. And I'm literally just coloring in the shapes that I've drawn. So the drawing is pretty important. And take your time and get a accuracy and detail. So go ahead and pause me if you're sketching along with me. You do want to make sure you're happy with your drawing before you start. Such a pretty color and I'm, I'm not drawn to purples. But this purple and this gold I've been playing with, yeah, loving it. <laughs> Let's drop a bit of that color. So if I want to thin my paint out, that's when I load it on here and add the saturation of water that I'm looking for. So using these type of palettes really helps control the mixture of the paint. So I'm just going to take my time here. I'm just paint in some segments. So there is a thing, a bleeding effect, where if you touch along a wet edge, it's going to pull it in. So if you want clean edges, for example, when we go back to this one, I want some clean edges, then you want to wait for it to dry a little bit. I'm just going to give a little bit of purple, soft color here. Okay, what do we want to add to the purple? 
Ooh, do some green. I haven't done any green yet. Let's try some green. Let's see what happens when I mix green and purple. Normally you would get something like a brown in an acrylic, and you might here as well. I'm going to find out. So let's drop some. Let's maybe do a little more saturation of color there. So this is tea green. And this is more of a, a wet on. It's still pretty dry. So you can see it didn't go brown. The color kind of sits on top. I'm just going to take a little bit of this off. So this is a lifting technique. So you wipe off your brush like this and you pull the paint and you can see how it lifts it and I love this look because it kind of makes everything really transparent I love that it gives you a little bit more confidence when applying color too that you're not that you you can actually lift the color off a little bit so I find watercolor a very unforgiving medium when it comes to mistakes. And that's probably what makes watercolor a little bit intimidating is once it's down, it's down. It's not like acrylic where you can paint right over it. So you have to, it, it's just practice and confidence when it comes to this medium. And the only way to practice is to get your hands dirty and just have fun. Don't worry about it being a big mess at the end. It doesn't matter. You're learning something from it. Trust me, a lot of the work I do ends up in my recycle box. <laughs> I like the green and the kind of iridescent feel it has. Let's go with maybe a blue now. So this one is called turkey blue it's very pretty we'll mix it with some of that green maybe you know i don't have a plan here i'm just i'm just playing i just like to experiment you can always add ink after to your drawings once you're done you can add a little detail back in with your inks your pens which we might do if this is dry because I do like that look. So I wait till the purple is dry here, for example. I didn't want the blue bleeding in there. I wanted to control it a little more. So I wait for this purple to dry and then I can drop some, some color in and not worry about it contaminating the purple at this point. So I'm gonna remove some water and I'm just going to pull this paint down. some blue there. Let's drop some purple in. See what happens. So I'm going to go back to that fresh purple with much more saturation. And I'm going to drop it in this wet blue. And see what it does. And this is what I love about watercolor. And every pigment and every brand will kind of saturate and react in a different way from each each color. It's really fun to experiment with. So you can see I start off light and then I get a little bolder as I move along. I don't it's because I don't have a game plan. So if you have if you know exactly what you're painting, then you would kind of follow the instruction to do that. But this is strictly experimental so I don't know what I'm doing so I start off light so I think we should do like a burst of color at the end here what do you think something dramatic like an orange maybe complementary to that purple so let's put that in and see what happens just for some fun 
So we're going over top of that green. Loving it. Let's bring some of that orange into his body. Again, I'm just following those contour lines. You can play with things like shadow, so you can build up a little bit more shadow on underneath here, where his wings would be on the side, and leave more of a highlight in the middle. Just kind of soften that color across. Lots of fun. I think we need to pop his wings. Should we go green, purple? We'll do whatever we want. So this is a bit wet still. I'm going to stay away from that edge. So I do want his wings separate. His, well, this isn't his wings. This is his casing, kind of his shell. I'm going to leave that for now because I don't want to. I don't want to bring that blue in. But let's move that blue into his legs. So it's pretty strong saturation of color here. I'm just going to pull in those cool textures on his legs. Drop a little bit of this color in his back. down here. I have a small brush to use somewhere that I'll probably switch to in a minute. Again, just filling in his little legs here. So I think we'll give him a rest. We'll let him dry a bit. We'll move back to this guy. Let's get into that little brush. So here's my little brush. Uh, I don't think this is a watercolor brush. I have no idea what this is. It's just a junky little brush, but it's got a very fine point on it. So I like to use it quite a bit. I really like the softness of this guy. I don't know how much more I want to put in him. So let's just play a little bit. So I'm going to grab that uh, sky blue. And maybe put a little bit more in here. Maybe a tiny, tiny bit of Payne's Gray, just to darken the color a bit. And I'm just going to start kind of giving him a little detail here, pulling out some fine veins. Do the same on this side, darken up under here a little bit. veins here through his wings. Just taking my time. I think what we'll do is use some of that orange and some of this blue to create this kind of greeny brown color. And we'll use that to kind of showcase that back leg that's stuck underneath the wing. So we don't forget it's there. Put a little bit on this leg. Just having fun. Experiment with the colors that are you're drawn to. Or uh, you can paint him exactly how you see him as well. No wrong or right here. Just experimentating. Experimentating? experimentation. <laughs> we'll get a little bit on his wing here. Now this wing is a little bit more opaque so we wouldn't see his wing underneath there. Let me just erase that. So there is a little 
There's a little forgiveness in watercolor, just not tons. There we go. So what do we want to do? I really like this dropping effect here. It's really cool. I think we need to darken this top wing a bit. So should we introduce another color? What should we do here? Maybe a green. I feel like, I feel like I need a green. What's this one? Don't like that one. Oh, that one's nice. What's that one? That is olive green. Yeah, I like that. Let's see. Do we like this? A little bit more water, I think. Just to add in a little, little something. Let's put a little couple of dots in here, the olive green. Can pull out some details on the back wing. Though I do want to keep that relatively light because again his wings are pretty transparent back here. So what I do on the one side or repeat on the other. And then I just dilute it. Soften it out. So I think it needs a little bit more contrast. So I think what we'll do is we'll go back to this kind of greeny brown color and add a tiny bit of, what's it called? Actually, you know what? Let's, let's go crazy. Let's add some purple. Let's add some purple with a little bit of um, Payne's Gray. We'll mix all those greens and Payne's Gray and just get ourselves a kind of nice dirty purple color here. Let's see what that does. So this is still wet, remember? Let's put some. I'm still gonna water it out. I'm gonna build up slowly because I don't, again, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so I'm just building up these contrasts nice and slow. That's why you need a half decent color, uh, water paper color as well, is to really be able to handle the abuse. I'm going to go back with that blue and darken up his body just a little. It's starting to get a little muddy. I really like his back wing here. I'm just going to take some of that water off. Kind of expose that watery mark. All right, let's do just a tiny bit of purple on these back legs. Mix it in. Just bring them forward a little bit. Oops. Put a drop of water there. Come off my brush. Just pull out these hind legs here. Long and droopy. Maybe pull out his antenna a little more. Shaky. I had too much coffee. Uh, I have a fly buzzing around my head, so if you hear that in the camera, <laughs> that's what it is. A pesky fly got in my house. Just going around his eyes here. I feel like his body needs a little bit more drama. A little purple in there. There we go. Now he's popping a little bit. I think what I want to do is add this purple. So I'm going to dab some water on the wings here. Where I want some purple to sit. Drop some purple in there. I'm going to use this big brush. Maybe saturate the brush. Let's see what the paint does here. I 
I think we'll let that dry. Maybe a little bit in here as well. So you can see how these layered colors in watercolor create new colors, like constantly. It doesn't get as muddy as fast as other mediums. Not, it's not to say you can't overwork something and turn it muddy, but just the saturation of color layering inside. So like you, you can see that original green even we put through underneath this purple. So that's why experimenting with these watercolors is so much fun. I think we'll put a little bit of detail in him and that will be it for him. So I'm going to go to, I don't know what color that was. I think it was those greens and purples mixed together. And I'm going to pull out a little bit of veining here. I don't want to give it too much detail, but I would like a little contrast on the underneath the wing here. Just soften that out a bit. And maybe we'll put some striping on the back of his metal shell here. His shell, not metal, but his actual shell. And you can do that with a pen. You can do it with paint. Do it with marker. It's going to give him a little bit of texture on his shell. And this is Payne's Gray with that purple. That's controlling the water on your brush. Put a little bit of shadow in here. Show the folds of his horns. The fold of his neck here. And then maybe just a little contrast coming down on the back. Maybe he's got some texture under there. So let's pop this abdomen, kind of space this meaty bit. Let's darken up in here. Just really kind of pop this contour now. So a curve and then I curve tight around the sides. So it gives that real round appearance. Real round. And a little dark spot at the top. So it really creates that curve. Let's go into this purple here. Up a little interest in his legs, kind of breaking up those segments. And I think we'll try and bring a little bit of orange back in somewhere. So I really like this orange. So it's a question of playing with the saturation of the paint, the um, how much water you're using. So this is going to be pretty thick because I want this orange to sit on top. So where do we want to put it? Maybe a little bit on his head here. So you can treat this watercolor a little bit more like gouache in some cases where it's thicker. 
It'll still act like watercolor paint, but it can give you a more opaque look, which is, in my opinion, a lot of fun. So that's kind of like a dry on dry almost, where there's not a lot of water in my brush right now. Really just playing with the pigment of the paint itself. Throw a little bit on here, just to bring that color palette in to his feet. So much thicker, a lot less water. Just little dabs of color. We could intensify this blue a little by doing the same. Very little color. a nice burst so I mean you can keep going and keep going but I'm really liking this guy and I don't want to overwork him so my indication is the paper when the paper starts going all right I'm done then my painting's done <laughs> otherwise I don't know so if I find spots of kind of a bit of wear and tear on my paper from me overworking it with the paint, then I know that it's time to call it a day with the paint. Just because, like I said, I'm not a watercolor artist, so I don't know 100% when I'm done my paintings. I just paint till I'm satisfied. I have overworked many a painting, so... I think this guy's good. I'm, I'm really liking it. I'm just getting rid of that pencil. There's two pencil marks. And then we'll check them out and see how dry they are because I would like to put a coat of um, gold on them. So I have this really pretty gold paint. Now I got this at the Pixies Playground on Etsy, but unfortunately she hasn't had a lot of paint, uh, any paint on her site for a while. So, um, whatever gold paint you can get your hands on, metallic paints. I know that Winsor Newton makes a really nice collection. And one day I'll, I'll get there. So I'm basically just saturating and waking up this paint. And then this guy is still pretty wet, but I think I can throw on a little bit here. And I'm just gonna drop in a few spots. I think I'll work on this guy a little bit. That other guy's still wet. And this will change the color of your paint for sure because it is, right now I'm using it quite thick. You might not be able to see it on the camera angle that you have. I'll move it in a second. So when it's thick like this, again, it kind of sits on top, which is what I want it to do. So I don't know if you can see that. So what I want to do now is create a thinner layer. So I'm going to clean my brush and I'm just going to kind of do a wash of this gold. I'm hoping you can see what I'm doing where the color underneath won't change, but it creates this kind of iridescent reflection. So it doesn't look gold. It's just kind of makes the purple metallic because I only have gold metallic paint. I don't have any other colors. I wish I did, because that could be a lot of fun as well. So I'm just gonna put it in a few spots. I'm gonna go back to a little bit more opaque here and drop a little bit in the legs. And I'm holding it like this because I'm hoping you can see it a little better. And just drop a little indication of gold, a little hint of gold in those legs. You could go as far as doing the veining in the gold would be really pretty just like that try and mimic the other side here it's kind of hard to hold it and paint it <laughs> pull that down across so there you go there's some veining I think I want to really get that horn here in gold just really bling it up just something really funny Let's put some gold in here. I think I'll do more of a wash on the back. So just a thin coat of watery gold paint just to give it that shimmer. So 
hopefully you can see that. And for this guy, I think we could do a drop of gold in the ends here, kind of like butterfly eyes. Really pop his body a little. I really like the simplicity of this one. Nice, delicate colors. And then we'll do a quick little wash to make his wings feel a little bit more iridescent. Don't want to change the color too much. There we go. Well, I hope you guys like today's tutorial. I hope bugs don't freak you out. But I find they're just, they're really, one, they're quite fascinating. And two, they are so much fun to play and paint because you're not restricted to any kind of color palette. It's really just up to you and a great way to play with the colors and experiment with watercolor itself and see, see how paints react and how colors mix. So I also sometimes take, I would normally wait for this to dry, of course, but I would take a pen and kind of pop in some contrast lines here just to bring out some details I might have lost or maybe just some details I want to pop a little more without using too much paint. This is just a uniball. This is a, uh, a uniball uh, vision it's called and it's just um, an ink flow archival waterproof ink. Kind of saturate in here a little bit darken it up. Again, you would want to wait till this dries, but you can just keep playing with that. You can draw all the details in you might want. Anyways, that is today's. I hope you liked today's uh, video. If you did, hit the subscribe and notification button for more. Um, I'd like to do some carving next with, uh, with insects. I have been playing a little bit, give you kind of a sneak peek here. So we'll, uh, we'll be carving our own insects and creating a little book of, um, fun insects as well. Hopefully I'll have these up in my Etsy store if you are interested in supporting the channel. It means a great deal and uh, we'll see you again soon guys. All right, take care. Bye.